Hi everyone, Cindy Turner here, creator of Evolving Women. And today I have the extraordinary Lauren Pearson with me. Lauren is the Director of Operations with Teladoc Incorporated. And I'd love to welcome you here today, Lauren. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. And today what I thought we would focus on in our conversation is what an extraordinary woman you are first and foremost. I wanted to celebrate that. But also um, to highlight, I guess, the success that you've had in your career to date as a, as a woman in leadership. So um, just wanted to celebrate you first and foremost for that and, and your achievement in um, where you're at in your career so far. So tell us a little bit about what Teladoc does. Uh, so Teladoc Health Incorporated offers virtual healthcare solutions for people. Um, we are a global organization uh, in about 130 countries. In Canada, people typically have us through their employee benefits. It would be very similar to Australia as well. Other countries may have us directly through the employer. So it's like an add-on health benefit mm -hmm. and they access us for assistance in navigating the healthcare system, whether it's assistance in finding a family physician or with a medical second opinion or with a virtual physician visit to talk about um, that chronic ear infection that you may have. And you are currently the Director of Operations in Canada. Tell us a little bit about your role and what that involves. So I have uh, about 50 operations staff here in Canada that is made up of clinical staff, nurses, occupational therapists, social workers, as well as ad medical, medical administration staff, and um, overseeing their day-to-day -day role in managing the services for our members. We call them members, not patients, because they already have uh, an on-site treating team if they're receiving care with a doctor. Um, our resources are more for informational purposes to be shared back with them and their uh, treatment provider um, to help make sure that they have the right diagnosis and are on the right treatment plan. So I oversee the clinical team and ensure that the delivery of service to our customers is um, as what they're expecting. Hmm, great. And so what would you say is your superpower? What's the superpower that you feel has helped you to get where you are today in your role? Gosh, that's such a good question. Um, I was, you know, you and I had have talked briefly about these things before, and I probably say that some of the things about me are that um, I'm authentic and I'm passionate and I, lead with clear communication and, um, and integrity. So whatever happens is typically an open door if I'm able to share that information. And um, I, I really just lead them with passion. You know, it's, it's um, I want to be someone who they see and who also represents what they do. Hmm. Awesome. So it sounds like you know, very much bringing that human-centered leadership to the way that you lead your teams. Yes. Yeah, great. Um, for many women that I've had conversations with about their career, they're often, um, they find there's hurdles along the way or challenges that trip them up in terms of getting to where they want to get in their career. And I know that you've had a very different experience um, working for Best Doctors and now Teladoc. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey, I guess, um, in that way. So I think um, an important thing to know is that I'm a registered nurse by trade. Before I was a registered nurse, I was a child and youth worker. Before that, I was a, a server. I was a teacher of English as a second language. And I find that I gravitate toward a field that's in the helping industries. And in order to be a helper, I need to have a good sense of what people need. So I believe that I have a strong emotional intelligence or a high emotional intelligence. And so being aware of what I'm asking for and uh, feeling like I deserve it, but also being aware of what's needed of me is really important. So being able to read 
other people I'm communicating with has helped me to ask the questions or to ask for what I want and to anticipate what their responses may be um, in me asking for those things. I, I have been very fortunate. I've been um, at Teladoc Health for um, 11 and a bit years and I continue to be given opportunities. I think part of it is that I'm outspoken um, and uh, and I, I do have passion and I'm authentic and I really value individual contributors on my team and I think um, being a, a good leader is about that effective communication and making other people feel empowered and to feel like they're a part of this journey so when I'm offered a promotion opportunity I really want to know how it's going to resonate with other people so that I can be the best leader I can to them and I'm asking for feedback so that I can continue to make myself a better leader and to grow in my opportunities. Mm. And I believe you've won an award through Teladoc as well to that effect. Tell us a bit about that. Oh gosh. Um, so that one was um, a number of years ago and it was the first time we introduced what they called a spirit award which stood for someone who is selfless, passionate, uh, shows integrity, relentless, innovative, and a team player. And it was at our holiday party and all the staff were there and it was being, um, the award was being given by one of our vice presidents and they were describing the person that was going to be receiving this reward and, or this award. And as she was talking, as she was rhyming off some of the characteristics that they were looking for, I was saying in my head, Oh my goodness, it's me. I'm, they're, they're offering it to me. And sure enough, they did. And, uh, and, and so I, 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 I'm always humbled and I'm always grateful. But at the same time, I knew she was talking about me. And a funny story about that is just, you know, my last promotional opportunity was about two years ago. And I was driving with my mother in the car, who's now about 75 and uh, a funny woman. And I was telling her about my promotion and what was coming along with it and the, the number of staff I was going to be responsible for. And she looked at me and she just went, my goodness, I'm amazing. <laughs> I made you. And so she was just totally prepared to, um, to take all that accountability and responsibility for my success um, in, in the way she mothered me. <laughs> Fantastic. I love that. <laughs> and for all of us who are mums, you know, to be able to see our success through our children, you know, and their achievements. So that's awesome. Um, and well deserving award for you as well. Knowing you personally for so many years, I think you're very well deserving of this Spirit Award. So I know too, Lauren, with your role that you, um, you manage quite a large number of women because you do work in healthcare. So you have said to me previously that you, you manage about 75 to 80% women. So yeah. you're probably very well, well qualified to answer this question around what do you see some of the challenges that women face in today's workplace? What are some of the things that you bump up against in managing women? Uh, I think you really have to be confident and I think sometimes it's easy to feel like you can be outshone by um, a male presence. So I can be very comical. I, when I lead, I lead with humor. I think that it's a really great way to connect with people. And mm -hmm. so when I do presentations to my staff, I'm kind of out there in front of them and I can be silly and stuff. But then you put me in another environment where I'm not as comfortable or not as familiar and perhaps there's a stronger male presence in the room and all of a sudden I'm tongue-tied and, and uh, I don't have that level of confidence. So I, I think that's part of it is that you still have to show, you, you have to be resilient, continue to be resilient and um, and and show that your voice is just as worth being heard as, as a, a male voice there. What advice would you give to a woman that you see has a lot of potential, but maybe is lacking that confidence? So how would you nurture and support her? I think it's important to remember as women that we 
do hold many of us a high emotional intelligence and to not be hardened because you think that's the way to achieve success in business. Uh, I think that um, having a, a soft side is really a very lovely part of my personality and I think it resonates with those that I communicate with. So I would just tell women not to put up walls. Um, I, I remember a few years ago I went through a, um, I did like a, a color profile and a styling to see um, mm -hmm. how I should be presenting myself. And one of the easiest things that she had said to me was no pointed shoes. So when I wear <laughs> heels, they should be round toed. And one of those reasons is that pointed gives across that presence of having a bit of hardness about you. And mm -hmm. it sticks with, even if not all of her things stuck with me, something about that really did because I just thought I want to always be approachable and I always want to be someone that uh, people feel like I uh, can communicate with me or that I'm an open communicator with them. Mm -hmm. One of the other ones I've learned through a stylist as well is having an open neck, like, like the top that you're wearing at the moment to show that part of your chest actually invokes trust as well and makes people feel comfortable. So there's lots of, I guess, very sub subliminal ways that we can build trust and confidence um, in the way that we dress and present ourselves. So yeah, very fascinating work. Mm -hmm. So what do you think that women need n more of right now to help support their development? I think we need mentors. I think that we need women leaders. I think we need um, to show other women's achievements. Um, I think there's so many ways that we can support women. And I'm fortunate again to be part of um, a group like this to talk to you who's just been an advocate for women always. Uh, I'm fortunate to come from a, a mother who has always believed this too. You know, I came from a household that was uh, quite reverse. So four daughters and my father was responsible for the cooking and the house cleaning and the buying of the tampons and the pads. And my mother was a carpenter and a mechanic. So um, I had those role models for me. If other women don't have those role models in their upbringing, at least to find someone either in their workplace or in their personal life to, um, to look for that leadership, to look for that mentorship, someone that they can talk to and help influence them in a positive way. Mm. And now as a mother yourself, what are the qualities that would be most important for you to see in Ren? Oh gosh, um, kindness and compassion, integrity and drive. So I now leave the home before Ren because she's a tween and she can get herself off to school, but we still have a morning call each day or when I would do her daycare drop-offs and she gets that pep talk from me each day where I just say, be you, be amazing, watch for that kid who doesn't have anyone else to play with on the playground, stick up for that child who's alone, stop bullying where you see it. And so I try to feed her confident words about being true to who she is but also making sure that she's empowering other children so Ren um, I'm very fortunate that she is a compassionate child already um, but she is drawn to certain groups of people or animals that may require additional support or assistance and um, I, I just love seeing that um, and so if I can continue to show her and to act with integrity, then, um, then my hope is that she will just continue to uh, have those characteristics and those features infused into who she is as a person. Hmm. I, I've known you, Lauren, for a long time, and I call you a very good friend. And um, I, I think you are such an incredible woman that espouses these qualities, both at work and the way that you live your life the way that you are raising your daughter. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible how much attention and focus you give to Ren and run a very successful business as well. So I just think um, fabulous, fabulous woman and certainly an inspiration for many of us who are looking for those role models, those positive examples of the way that we can bring more of those feminine qualities to the way that we lead and live. So thank you so much for your time today, Lauren. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. 
always a pleasure to talk to you anytime on camera or off. <laughs> Thank you.